So, morning, yeah. So, we're joined here by with Dennis Howard from Munster Bow Events. So, Dennis, thanks for taking the time to have a chat with us here this morning, and uh, we'll be going drying off some cows there shortly. So, look, before we start, I suppose, um, uh, dry, drying off cows, now very topical, obviously, this time of year as we're coming to the end of the season. Um, so, obviously, a lot of talk around the, the legislation coming in there around the AMR, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, should. There's, I suppose there's new legislation coming in the 28th of January 2022 um, and it's all about combating uh, AMR. So what is AMR? Antimicrobial resistance. I suppose it, it's when an antibiotic that was previously effective against a, a bacteria that killed it previously that doesn't kill it anymore. So the bacteria has become, has become resistant. Okay. And it's, I suppose it's a big challenge but in the, for, for animal health and I suppose more importantly really for human health that that they're finding now that it's getting harder to cure infections and they're, going, they're having to go higher up the chain of antibiotics to try and kill infections that were previously easily killed. Okay. And the big thing with, with, uh, with AMR and anti antibiotic resistance is that the more antibiotics you use, the more chance the bacteria have to develop resistance. You know? okay, so yes. so yes. A, a big thing really is to try and reduce our use of antibiotics use. and when we are using them, to use them correctly. So part of that legislation is that they don't want antibiotics to be used for prevention anymore. Um, that could be for preventing pneumonia or preventing whatever disease, but I suppose what we're talking about this morning, Pat, is, is preventing mastitis. And yeah. like it's, it's the norm, blanket dry cow therapy, it was part of the five point mastitis plan introduced 50 or 60 years ago. And it's worked very well for us, but I suppose it's, it's, it's kind of no longer acceptable to be putting antibiotics up into healthy yes. others, you know, okay. um, Very just, good. Just, just in case yeah. or just for prevention. So we're going to have to change our, our practices right, a little bit that, in that yeah. regard. Yeah. I suppose the big thing is obviously milk recording is a must. Um, and I suppose in fairness, once above, you have a great app there. I suppose you might just tell us about the selecting out of cows and, and, and what's needed on a farm level, I suppose, for, the, for that selection. Then. Yeah, I suppose th there's two parts to it. You want a suitable, suitable farm or suitable herd, and then within that herd, suitable cows, you know. So if we look at the, the herd criteria, if you want to do selective dry cow therapy, I suppose number one, like you said, Pat, you must be milk recording, otherwise you, you just don't have the yeah. information, you know, and you need to be milk recording for at least two, ye for, for at least two years, really, to have enough okay. information. Um, the next part is you need really good control of cell count and mastitis, so the bulk milk needs to be consistently under 200,000. Um, the third part then, I guess, is, is housing. We're standing in a very nice house here this morning. You see all the beds are very well limed and very clean. Yep. So enough cubicle space, uh, good quality housing, and even um, coming at calving time as well, then enough calving facilities. I suppose the fourth thing then is you need to do culture and sensitivity to make sure that you're negative for, for um, well, you want to find out the bacteria and find out the best antibiotic for the cows you are treating, but also make, make sure you're negative for this uh, strep agalacte, so it is a bug. It's nearly disappeared with blanket dry cow therapy, but it's still hanging around and the danger is, if it's there, that it could really spread uh, in the following lactation. Okay. So, milk recording, um, mastitis well under control, your housing, um, and then that you're negative for, for strep agalacte. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what way does your app incorporate that or how would you, do, do farmers use the app, I suppose, to, to help with that, then, Dennis? They do. I suppose the app brings you through and I forgot actually that the new infection rate over the dry period, so I have a low new infection rate over the dry period, so I suppose what the app does is it, it, it brings you through those, those herd criteria, so um, it asks you the question, have you enough cubicle space, have you done your culture and sensitivity, um, and is your bulk milk under 200,000? And then it actually does the rest. It, okay. it does that calculation for the new infection rate. So what we mean there is a cow that was low at her milk recording before dry off, that's gone high in the first milk recording within 60 days after calving, that's called the new infection. And a lot of them were attributed back to the dry period. So okay. having a low new infection rate there in cows, less than 10%, low in heifers, less than 15%, is really a great barometer of how things have been going during the dry period. Okay. Um, so yeah. the, the app does it. You'll also find it in the cell check reports, uh, the bottom of the cell check report there. Yeah. 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 And just to touch on that point, the 60 days after calving, I suppose obviously it's a very busy time. If you've a cow calved the first of February, you're still not finished by the end of March, and it's a difficult one to get that. Yeah, first, yeah. But it's it's it a is, vital recording. It is. Really. Yeah, it is. I suppose it's from from the milk recording point, the company point of view, it's it's difficult to get to everyone. Yeah. But obviously from the farmer point of view, just talking to, to Dennis here this morning, like it's very difficult. It is a very difficult, that difficult to do, yeah. or that really busy time of year to try and do a milk recording there sometime in March. Yeah. Um, to pick up to pick up cows within 60 days of calving. Okay, yeah. very good. 
So once we've our criteria, and maybe what, t just to touch on that, what is the criteria you would use for not using antibiotics and going with seal or alone, or, or, or what, what so would you look at individually in a cow there, I would say, for that? Yeah, so we're, we're happy now that the herd is, is suitable to fulfilling all the criteria. Um, I suppose the, the individual criteria then for, for the cows is a bit of a, a movable feast. You can be as strict or um, as risk averse as you like, you know, yeah. so if you're doing it on ICBF, you can put in the filters less than 50,000, less than 60,000 for all the milk recordings. I suppose the criteria we use in the app is um, the last, the average for the year must be under 100,000. The last milk recording SCC must be under 100,000. Uh, no recording over 200,000. She must have a milk recording within 60 days of dry off and she must have at least three milk recordings for the year. So that's at least three. At least three yeah. and no case of mastitis. So that's yeah. the other thing, you really need to be recording your case of mastitis. So Throughout if a cow had a case of mastitis, she should be getting an antibiotic as well. Yeah, and just speaking one or two farmers, I suppose what they'd have said maybe, does the last milk recording, if the cow is coming off and the litres have obviously dropped, that is diluted a small bit, the cell cow might, might rise. Is there a kind of a parameter there? To yeah, sure, you're, you're, you're right, Pat, that the last, um, you know, especially if you're gone once a day or something for the yeah. last few weeks before dry off, the cells might say the same, but because the, the milk is less, you know, there's a physiological rise in cell count. But yeah. really, if your cell count is well under control, it should still be, it should still be, it should okay. still be under 200,000. Yeah. Very yeah. good, yeah. very good. Um, for cows then, I suppose, that are being culled, I suppose some guys have obviously different, might be expanding, might have to hold on to cows. Yeah. If a cow is a constant cell count mm. issue, so I suppose the big thing to look at there is, is the cure rate for the previous dry period. Um, the target there is, is over 85%. And you, if, the, if the cure rate is low, it is often a sign that you're holding on to cows that shouldn't be held on to, you know? Yes. Um, and really that they're, that they're chronically infected. And the ones to really watch out for are cows that were high in the previous lactation, didn't cure in the last dry period, and are still high this year, like they have, they have no chance of curing really. Yes. And like they, they shouldn't be milking next year really, you know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're, they're the cows that, that shouldn't, shouldn't be, that should go really, okay. you know. So we're just going, before we dry off um, the cows here this morning, so just maybe a few more things to discuss then, Dennis, I suppose, leading into the, the dry, drying off period or the drying off days that you're going to go at it, putting cows on once a day, or, or what are the different things that you'll be looking at? I suppose there's no point. Yeah, uh, sure, look, I suppose people, people do like to go on, on once a day for, you know, for the last few weeks. Um, I wouldn't have a huge problem with it once the cell count is well under control and you do it in plenty of time. You know, what, what is a disaster is put cows on once a day for two or three days before, yes. or even a week before dry off, trying to reduce volume. Yeah. That is not a good practice. Okay. But you know, some people do go on once a day in, you know, for, for the last part of the lactation. Part of it, yeah. But if they're settled on once a day, you know, you have to be realistic too and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know and with labour and all the rest of it. Go yeah, with that, yeah. 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 And um, feed, we'll say, prior to drying off again, should ration cut down or, or strip grazing or what? Yeah, sure, look, I suppose the last couple of days, you want to, some cows will be, you know, depending on the herd now and, and the volume and the milk volume and all the rest, but some cows will be well below 10 litres anyway and, and it's time to dry them off. Yeah. Other cows, I suppose, in herds that are a bit more milky, the challenge is to try and reduce that yield down to around the 10 litres, you know, before drying off. And there's no point in changing nutrition the day you dry them off because they're yeah. going to bag up anyway. So ideally you try and draft them out and change it a few days be before beforehand, again. pull back the concentrates to a very low level, maybe onto some kind of, you know, lower quality silage or hay or something. Yes that they'll try, you know, to try and soak them up a few days beforehand rather than, rather than the day you're drying them off. Yes, yeah. and I suppose your, I call your typical cow in Ireland will say that's doing that 6,000 litres. She's down at around 10 litres a day, we'll say. Does she need to be sealed? Does she, can, can she be left out in the paddock and dry herself off if she has gone to that stage? Or what, if, again, if all the boxes are ticked or what? Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think all cows should be sealed, Pat. Okay, you know, yeah. I, think, I think they've been a revolution or, or you know, uh, a revelation really since, yeah. since it started, whenever it was, maybe about 30 years ago, you know, or, or 20 years ago, started sealing cows. And I suppose really even in practice, the big difference I saw when I started off, the amount of, uh, of E. coli mastitis should be gone out in the spring. And as more people started sealing, E. coli has dropped. dropped so that, that tells yeah. its own story. Okay, okay. Um, very good. Um, and I suppose uh, as well, the modern cow, you know, they're faster milkers. The flow rate at milking time has gone up. The teat ends are not as good to close, close up after yes. drying. That keratin plug, that's, you know, they're not as good at self-sealing. So, you okay. know, 
they need to be sealed really to, to try and prevent those new infections. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose we, we'll probably discuss it after again, but go after, again, hygiene is a big, big thing around it, it's a major part of it, and I suppose after yeah. the clothes are dried off, I suppose, what is the recommendations yeah. there then again? Or even to go back slightly before it, we really need to start working the hygiene, you know, before, yeah. before, before they're dried off, um, you know, whether it's roadways, keeping the passages right, uh, clipping the tails, you know, well in advance of dry off. So trying to have the cows clean, clean um, before you dry them off, because you're not going to clean them up the day, you know, the day yeah. of dry off. So try to be working that um, that, they're, that they're as clean as possible before you start drying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, afterwards, so we will we'll touch on the dry off in a minute. But afterwards, then um, managing them after dry off, really, it is the same thing. Going out in the paddock, like you said, Pat, is great. Mm. If, if you have that facility to leave them off, it's, yeah. it's, um, it's great, you know, they can stretch out and lay out, out in a clean environment, out in a clean paddock. Yes. If they're not, if the weather is bad, um, really, you're, you're talking about managing the cubicles the same as if they're milking. So okay. cleaning, liming twice a day, using disinfectant lime, running the scrapers often. So just hygiene, just to try and keep them as absolutely yeah. clean as possible. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose you see a leakage in a cow after and you have the sealer done, I suppose, what would you be recommending to do it in? Yeah, so look, I suppose the big risk is the, f is the 10 to 14 days after dry off. Yeah. The next risk is, is the couple of weeks before calving. But if you do see a cow leaking, um, I'd say monitor her closely, you know. And yeah. a lot of them are okay, but really monitor them very, um, very closely. If she's sealer only, um, you know, I suppose you're slightly more worried. You know, the cow that has got the antibiotic is probably safe enough, but the cow that got, got sealer only and is leaking, you'll be really monitoring. and. Um, you know, I suppose you could reseal them, or if you're really worried, you know, put up the antibiotic, okay. depending on the time now, and yeah. up to, to calving, you could, you know, you could tube them and reseal them, but, again, yes. but definitely re resealing works well. Hygiene again, obviously. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 keeping an eye on them constantly. And I suppose then, leading into, leading into then again, um, your hygiene again, I suppose, coming in 14 days, you were saying earlier to me, prior calving again, you're nearly up, up yeah, the game so again then at that stage. When cows are soaked up and dried up and they're sealed and, and that plug is after developing inside in the teeth end again, they're, they're reasonably safe, you know, so you still want good hygiene right through the dry period. Yeah. But uh, when they're starting to spring then and coming up the calving again, you know, the risk starts to go up. Um, you know, they're starting to bag up, especially heifers that aren't sealed, you know, th their teeth are starting to become patent. Yeah. So, you know, the management has to go up again, so back to really managing them as if they're milking past. Yes, yep. yes. Yeah. And I suppose we'd see a lot in our day-to-day -day job, which says we're selling in calf heifers as well, then it's the teeth sealing and heifers. It's a, uh, yeah. I know some, some people are very, very happy with other guys skeptical and other yeah, people yeah. leave alone. What, what's yeah. your thoughts on it maybe? Sure, look, I suppose it works. Uh, it's not licensed in this country, but it's, it's licensed out in New Zealand. I suppose that's where, it, that's where they started oh, it. Yeah. And it, and it does work once it's done correctly, because you, you have the, the danger of actually introducing an infection and making things worse, you yeah. know, which I've seen happen, just uh, okay. doing more harm than good. Yeah. But I suppose really I question, you know, like it's okay as a bit of a stopgap maybe, you know, if, uh, if a herd expanded and you're trying to catch up with, with housing and catch up with cubicle space. But really, if you have a very high new infection rate on heifers and you're actually making up for it with teeth sealing, you know, is there other impacts on the heifer? Yes. Is yes. she enough yes. space? Has she enough feed space? Um, there's other, other underlying there issues is, there yeah, rather yeah, than yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So you'd like to resolve it uh, without teeth sealing, you know, but but like it does work um, yeah. and it has got a lot of people out of trouble, to be honest, you know. Okay. So, yeah.